Welcome to the Jamie Ivy Show. I'm your host, Jamie, and today I sit down with my friend Lauren Petrowski, and we talk about motherhood and work life and how do we do them both. Lauren, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's so good to finally meet you. We live in the same city. I know. And here we are. Have uh, many mutual friends. Many mutual friends. Well, I want to say congratulations because you had a baby this year. I did. Yeah. Baby Thank number two. You. Yes. She's she's uh, she's a dream, a dream angel baby. We is she an her. angel baby? You know, she is now. Okay. First couple months were rough, <laughs> as you know, many newborns are. Um, but no, she's she's wonderful now. I mean, she's just my little muff, muffin. Oh, I you know? love it. Yeah. Okay, so mother of two. Mother of two. Was going from one to two difficult for you? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, especially because my son was four and a half when we had my daughter. So I feel like we'd really gotten in our rhythm oh, yeah. with one child and he had really gotten used to being an only child. Um, so it was definitely a challenge going from one to two and now a lot of my attention being on the baby and not so much on him and then trying to figure out the balance of everything with having two Has kids. Has he ever now. said he doesn't like her? Like I want to send her back? He's more just like disinterested. Okay, yeah. Doesn't care about her at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> Could not care less that she's even in his world. Right, right. He's like, if I don't acknowledge her, maybe this is not real. Oh, yeah. I mean, she could be screaming, crying. I'm feeding her. I'm dealing with her. And he's like, hey, mom, do you know where I put my Legos? <laughs> I'm like, dealing with something right else, now. bud. Yeah, but yeah. Look for yeah. them. I think he's coming around a little bit, you know, as she gets older and she starts to have more expressions, mm -hmm. laugh more yeah. at him. yeah. I'm hoping he'll come around. He will. He will. Okay. So you had your daughter. Um, had were we already in quarantine? Oh yeah. COVID. Yeah. So so I was um, seven months pregnant. I was due in two months when the shutdown, shut down. The shutdown happened. Okay. Yeah. So you spent your last two months shut last down. Two months. I don't know if I left the house once. Really? Yeah. I think I picked up coffee one day. <laughs> And um, and you're like, oh, the world still exists. That, I mean, I went to my doctor's appointments, yeah. which was also another weird experience. Yeah. Um, so what was that like? Because you've had a baby not in COVID. <laughs> you had a baby during COVID. Mm -hmm. How has that experience been, even with just, like I know, for example, you couldn't, what do you do with your son when it's time to go to the hospital? And yeah, all, it, how is that for you guys? It was the whole thing. I actually wrote a whole blog post about postpartum during a pandemic because it it was such a surreal experience and you know we were very fortunate to have our health and all of that but you know we had to make arrangements for my mom to come in town we don't have family that live with us or live here so we had to arrange for her to come in town which was taking a risk in itself yeah. having her fly mm -hmm. but we had nowhere else for my son to go I mean friends who had offered which right. we could have taken them up on that but um, so my mom had to come in town. Luckily, she arrived a few days before I went, went into, into labor. labor. Mm -hmm. So he was with her and we were in the hospital for a very short time because of COVID and the fact that it was my second child. Um, you know, everything was OK, fortunately. And they let us go after um, a, a little over a day. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it yeah. was nice. But then, you know, you leave the hospital <laughs> and you're home with the newborn and you're like, can I go back? I, um, I remember but, when we had our first, I've only birthed one child, but when I birthed my child, uh, I was young and the nurse was like, so in the middle of the night, if he were to stop breathing, here's what you do. And I was like, can you please take him? <laughs> Just take him because I don't want to have to know what to do in the middle of the night if yeah. he stops breathing. So what about just adjusting to motherhood with the way the world is? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you struggle with postpartum depression at all. What has that experience been like yeah. for you? I would say I'm fortunate that I have not struggled with postpartum depression or anxiety, but I have definitely experienced feelings of loneliness and isolation, especially during this time. Because if you think about it, um, when we're not in a pandemic uh, and someone has a baby, your house is usually pretty busy. You've got friends coming by, family members who are coming in to help. I mean, sometimes so much where it's like, whoa. Go back. Yeah. yeah. But I have hardly seen anyone since bringing a baby home. I mean, we have our couple friends that we've spent time with, um, my mom who's come in town a few times, my in-laws who have come to visit for a short period of time. But for the most part, it's mm -hmm. just us. And my husband works full time and he works out of the house. 
So I am at home all day with the baby. <laughs> is there, what's the positive in it? All the family I, time? The positive is that I have hardly missed a moment of my daughter's life mm -hmm. and I cherish that so much. I'm getting to see every single stage of her life and we obviously have a lot of quality family time together. My, my son, uh, it goes to pre-K for a few hours a day and then I pick him up and we're together in the <laughs> afternoons. So we play together a yeah. lot. Um, we've gotten to know our neighbors really well. I'm so grateful for them because luckily, you know, I'm, I'm with someone yeah. all the time uh, in the afternoons. Our children play together and we spend time together as, yeah. as a family outside. But uh, yeah, there are definitely times yeah. where it gets lonely. You know, I'm very active on social media <laughs> and that probably has a lot to do with it because I spend the majority That's your of my output. day yeah. at home, Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. I remember, and tell me if you can relate to this, my husband would come home from work when I had little kids, and I would just start talking to him, like nonstop oh. talking to him. And he would look at me and he would say, mm -hmm. have you talked to anyone today? And I was like, no, just yeah. these little people. Yeah, and they're not people, really having people. good conversation with yeah. me. We have a joke because my husband, um, gets tired, I would say, you know, he, like I said, he works full time out of the house. He's kind of, we're, we're both uh, morning people, but he gets up early. And so after we put our children to bed, like he's usually almost ready for bed himself. Yeah. And I'm like, no, sir. <laughs> like I was at home all day with children. Yeah. Like, let's hang out, let's talk, like, you know, let's make a drink, yes. let's watch a movie together um, because I need, I need some adult interaction. Okay, well, here's my advice from a mom who has teenagers. Mm -hmm. Spend that time now because one day they're gonna get old and they're never gonna go to bed <laughs> and you're gonna be like, husband, <laughs> where are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so enjoy, Aww. make a drink, watch a movie, do I that, know. yeah, yeah. Okay, so you've been a mom for five years now. Yeah, if you could hard look, to believe. I know, right? It goes by quick. If you could look back at your ideas of motherhood before mm -hmm. versus what motherhood is like now, what are the differences? I did not see myself being at home so much because, with my right. children. Mm -hmm. um, you know, career or not, pandemic or not, I just really saw myself kind of always being a very busy person yeah. outside of the mm -hmm. home. Yeah. So I didn't take that into account at all. Yeah. You know, the fact that you want to be uh -huh. at home with your children yeah. maybe yeah. more than you yeah. expected yeah. and want to be around these yeah. little people and see every moment yeah. of their lives. I know for me, when I look back at pre-kids, um, I thought and imagined that motherhood would be really like second nature a little bit for me. Yeah. Is and what about mm -hmm. so when I look back I think man it's harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I think I knew it was going to be hard. I think I was scared about that. When I first found out I was pregnant I cried even though we had wanted this. Just a bit Just the knowing unknown. how much my life was going to change and the challenges that I knew were going to come my way. Mm -hmm. I also my son was a and still is a a daddy's boy from day one. Really? And that was very hard for me because everyone says, oh, little boys love their moms. And and I, I have no doubt he loves yes. me. Yes. But he loves his dad. His world revolves around his yeah. dad. Uh -huh. You know, his yeah. son rises and sets with his dad. Yeah. Still and today. Still today and, and from day one. Honestly, from the time he was a, a newborn, like yeah. coherent with uh -huh. anything in the world, yeah. lit up with his dad. And that was definitely a challenge for me as a new mom because I think you expect your children, and in many cases, yeah. they are so attached to the mom. Yeah. They're snuggly. Uh -huh. They want their mama. Yeah. And that wasn't really what I experienced mm -hmm. with my first child. Mm -hmm. um, and that definitely. What about now? Was Can you tell yet with your daughter? <laughs> my daughter's my girl. She's your girl. That's your mother. <laughs> you said she's a mama's girl. Yeah, she's a mama's girl, and I don't know if it's because I have spent so much time with her. <laughs> yeah, because you're like it's just her and I. Too. She really she's she's an easy baby. She loves everyone. I mean, you're holding her. She, she loves to be held. So Aww. it's like yeah. if you're holding her, yeah. giving her attention, she's happy. Yeah. But yeah, I think she, she's my girl. She's your girl. She's your girl. <laughs> well, um, I do know that this year has been not only just hard because of COVID, but I know that last year you took a change in your career. And so we're going to take a short break and we'll come back and talk about what life has been like for Lauren on the other side of working more than you work now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk about it when we come back. Able is an ethical fashion brand that employs and empowers women as a way to end the cycle of poverty. It started with scarves years ago and now it's an entire fashion brand. And I am so grateful that Able has dressed me from head to toe for this Jamie Ivy show. I would love for you to see all my favorites. Go to jamieivy.com slash Able 
to see everything I'm loving at ABLE right now. All right, guys, welcome back. I'm here with my friend Lauren, and we were talking about motherhood, but I wanna talk about something that's really important to both of us, <laughs> and that is working life as a mom. Um, I know that life took a big change for you in 2019 mm -hmm. when after 12 years of working here in Austin, am yeah. I right about that? Yeah. 12 years, you decided to take a big step and come home. <laughs> and I can only imagine how hard that decision was. Hardest decision of my life. Is it? Yeah, so what definitely. led up to that? What made you think? Because you mentioned when we were talking about motherhood, I could tell you were like, this is why it was so hard. I never imagined yeah. with working, working life as a mom. Tell yeah. me what led to this decision? Yeah, I had never imagined that I would come to make that decision. Uh, I was a morning news anchor and that was my dream job from the time I was 14 years old. I knew- To be a morning news anchor. To be a morning news anchor. I became really interested in the news when I was in high school. I decided that's what I wanted to study in college. I did. I worked at my campus TV station. I was a news anchor. I had three internships in college. I mean- All the things. The plan was there. It yeah. was set. I was following that plan. I got a job right out of college as a news reporter, moved to a small city by myself, and then was able to move back um, and, and get a job in Austin and then eventually work my way up to a, a morning show news anchor position. And I loved it. I loved my job. <laughs> I loved it so much. I was so thrilled to be able to do what I got to do. Um, but when I had my son, things got harder. Um, it just became more difficult. The schedule, I was waking up at 2.30 in the morning. I can't even like wrap my head around waking up at 2.30 and not going back to bed. <laughs> right? And I did go back to bed in the afternoon yeah. when I would, you know, nap. Um, and that was the thing. Before I had my son, I would nap in the afternoons. So, you know, my schedule was my own. So yeah. I'd do whatever I wanted. I'd nap or I'd not nap or I'd lay on the couch whatever or I you wouldn't. Wanted. I'd go to bed early or not, whatever. Um, but then when he came along, you know, I had to stick with this schedule where I was working a pretty long day that started very early mm -hmm. and then having a very small window before I had to go pick him up from preschool and he was a very active child and so he didn't take a lot of naps yeah. and I would try to nap when he napped and before long you know those naps were getting shorter and sometimes they weren't happening which means I wouldn't get my nap mm -hmm. and I was kind of a miserable person then I was so exhausted I mean I was just a zombie yeah and it, it just, you know, I, I started coming to the realization that I don't know if this is going to work out. We knew we wanted to have another child. Mm -hmm. And I was really struggling every single time that alarm clock would go off. It wasn't this thought anymore of, oh, I'm tired, but I'm, I'm going into work to yeah. do my dream job. It was, I am so exhausted. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, you know, my contract was coming up. I, I had a great relationship with management where I worked. I really wanted to maintain that. I, you know, I didn't want to just up and leave, but um, it was coming to the end of my contract. And unfortunately, you know, we just weren't able to figure out something yeah. that would work with the kind of yeah. schedule that I would love to have. And I just had to decide, I, I think, I think this is it and I'm gonna have to take a step back from TV news. So you said hardest decision ever. Definitely. I get it. Um, was there a part of you that was like, this doesn't feel fair. Like why do I have to pick one or yeah. the other? Yeah. And you would make the same choice today again. I would, even <laughs> though it was the hardest decision and I still, you know, it was, one of the hardest days of my life, the last day there, one of the most emotional days of my life. And I had thoughts about, am I going to regret this? Am I making a mistake? I, I don't regret it one day um, because I have gotten to spend more time with my family, more time with mm -hmm. my son, and then I really haven't missed a moment of my daughter's <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah. And so, no, I, I don't regret it at all. Um, but I do miss my job and I hope that that wasn't the end yeah, for me. Yeah, so what does that look like for, I mean, as women, we're having to make decisions like this all the time and it's hard and this conversation could last like three weeks about yeah. the decisions that women have to make in their careers. Um, what do you hope that, what are you looking forward to? Like, I know that you're not done with your career. Oh, um, thanks, Jamie, I hope. <laughs> you're not done. Uh, does it feel like that or do, are you concerned? Uh, of course I get concerned. I think because, you know, going back to the type of person I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little type A and I, I have a plan and I stick with the plan and I go after it. Yeah. And, you know, at this point I'm like, oh gosh, I've been out of the business this long. Who's going to hire me? How am I going to find the right job when the time comes along? Am I missing this opportunity by saying no to this? And, 
you know, I, I, I hope it's not over. And I hope that one day when I am ready to go back to work more, um, that maybe there is a, an opportunity that comes along. Yeah. yeah, I've had times in my life where I've had to make decisions like that. Um, not necessarily leaving a career after 12 years, but just having to say no to things. Um, and I've learned that sometimes saying no is one of the hardest things, but it often can lead to something like deeper and more meaningful mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. It's right now you're getting to spend time mm -hmm. with your kids. Um, I do wonder though, when you were contemplating this idea of, should I do mm -hmm. this? Should I not do this? Uh, how did your friends react to this? Yeah. Did you have people telling you, Lauren, this is dumb? Or did you have people <laughs> telling you, Lauren, this is a great idea? What, what was yeah. the consensus? Um, you know, I think I'm fortunate that I have very supportive friends and family. I will say, I think my parents were a little surprised with the decision. They have known me to be someone who has gone after what I want. I've wanted this since... Well, they saw you in junior high <laughs> yeah. when you were like, this yes. is what I'm going to do. Uh, and I think they were a little surprised by it, but of course supportive. And my mom just retired this past year. So she's worked almost my entire life. Yeah. She understands um, how hard it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, my friends were very supportive, which, yeah, in a way almost surprised me. I think I thought uh, I would get questioned a little bit more by some of my friends because they knew that I had worked so hard to get where I was and that I really did love my job. And I think they couldn't imagine that I would all of a sudden leave to mm -hmm. spend more time at home. Yeah. But I feel very thankful that I have such supportive friends yeah. um, because I definitely was turning to friends at that time. Yeah. Did you have any pushback? I, from friends, uh, because I think this is a hard think, discussion when you're yeah, like, I think what do I do as a woman? Like I said, I think some were surprised because I have always been so out there in Austin, in the media, mm -hmm. you know, made it clear this is what I want to yeah. do. And so I think some friends were surprised, mm -hmm. um, but of course supportive if, if that was the direction I wanted to go. You even surprised yourself a little bit, maybe? You definitely surprised myself <laughs> because I think a part of me thought, I'm gonna go tell them, my management, that you know, here are the issues that I'm having with my schedule. Maybe we'll come to some sort of agreement. And when that didn't happen, and I had to stick to my guns and say, okay, well then I, can't I, do I, this. I think I can't do this. And so when I actually said those words, and then they actually acknowledged, okay, then I guess you know, this is, this is, this the, is end. the end after being with the company so long. Yeah, that, that was, there was Definitely probably some small some part of you that was like, surely, surely it won't come to this, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 You're going to give me my own show? <laughs> right. Great. This is awesome. <laughs> you know, when I think about, I mentioned earlier about those hard decisions, there usually is something on the other mm -hmm. side. And I'm not someone who believes that like every door closes, another go to the window or something. I don't know. I just think sometimes things yeah. close and then there's no window. You just yeah. close the door. Um, but I've always had those times where I look back and I can say, as hard as that was, I can see why it happened. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you're there yet. You've mentioned how much time you get to spend with your kids. So I have a small suspicion that you're there and then you can go, this is what this is yeah. for. This is what this is for. And just to encourage you, like, Look how young you are, Lauren. You've got the rest of your life in front of you. <laughs> you Thank got, you, because it doesn't always feel that way, yeah. you know, as you get older. Yeah. You know, you think, oh, I, I can't do this anymore. Or I'm getting too old or, you know, they'll want to hire someone younger or this is too late to start mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, I, I started reading your book and, and you said something in there that really resonated with me about um, the impact that you have may change, mm. but you're still making an yeah. impact. Yeah. And I think it's so hard because it, for so long in my life, my identity was tied to my career and what I was doing uh, as my profession. Mm -hmm. And now I have to remind myself, like I am making an impact yeah. on my children's life. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna make me emotional. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. gonna, I'm not gonna get emotional talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. The impact feels smaller because you're standing in front of just two people. That's what's so beautiful about it, is Thanks. that that matters and it's impactful. Uh, we're gonna take a short break and come back and talk about what Lauren is doing now. We've been married for almost two decades, and most of what we thought about marriage before getting married turned out to be wrong. It's better than we thought. But it's harder than we thought. We love deeper than we ever thought possible. And we have to work harder than we ever thought we would have to. 
And so we want to help you fight for your marriage and believe in it more than you even think it's possible. We wrote this book, Compliment, for all of you. Those of you that are engaged with Marriage on the Horizon, we believe this book has something for you. Those of you in the early years of marriage, still trying to figure things out, there's something in here for you too. Or maybe like us, you've got a few years of marriage under your belt, but maybe things seem a bit stale in your marriage and friendship. We hope that this book will be a catalyst to remind you of the beauty available to you within marriage. So we want to be super clear, we are not experts on marriage and we don't have a perfect one, but we do believe in it and we believe in your marriage. Compliment is two books in one written by both of us. I wrote a section. And I wrote a section. We each wrote on the same 10 topics, things like loving, fighting, forgiving, sex, parenting, and mission. And we didn't even read each other's sections beforehand and together our two parts make up one book. Compliment is full of stories and encouragement about how to choose together over separate in marriage. How to bring out the best in the other person, complimenting each other day after day, year after year. And we truly believe that when you do that, that God is glorified and that your marriage becomes stronger and more unified, more like how God intended it to be. All right, we're back guys with Lauren. Um, you know what we were talking about earlier about this identity. And I think that everyone can relate to that at different seasons in their life of just kind of having to switch, even taking on the role as a mom, mm -hmm. even when you were working is a switch. Yeah. And yeah. then you have this new identity um, yeah. where you're trying to find who you are now. And isn't it funny? I don't know. I don't want you to tell how old you are. That's rude for me to ask. <laughs> but I even think as a 40 year old woman, sometimes I'm still trying to figure out who I am how is that, yeah. just that figuring out who is Lauren right now? Mm -hmm. Struggle? Definitely a struggle and one that I didn't see coming. Yeah. So, and obviously I'm still a little <laughs> emotional about it when I talk about it. Because I think for so long I had figured out who I am and what I want to do. And I just stuck with it and never had an issue with that. And the questions never came up. Yeah. And so now it is really interesting to me in my late 30s that I'm now having that question of who am I? Am I mainly a mom and a wife? Um, you know, what else am I doing? Um, so it's really interesting trying to figure that out yeah. for the first time in a long time. I know. I think that we're gonna bust a lot of young girls bubbles because we're like, hey, you have to do this again <laughs> in later yeah. in life. You know what I mean? You think you have it figured out in your mm -hmm. 20s. And then I think each decade brings new struggles, yeah, new true. things to figure out. Yeah. So what are you figuring out? Because for me, I love working. I do too. And I didn't even, my story's a little different. Like, I didn't really know, I didn't start working a lot mm -hmm. until after my kids were older. Yeah. And so now I'm in this new season where I, I get to pour myself into work more because my kids are bigger. Yeah. How are you still feeling that desire in your mm -hmm. heart for work? Yeah. Well, I try to do some freelance work and that does fulfill that side of me. Uh, you know, I worked in TV news for almost 15 years. Yeah. So I have um, those skills and that knowledge. And so I still... I get to MC and host a lot of events, which I really do That's enjoy fun. doing. I did some of that while I worked, um, but now more so. And I've even done virtual events, yeah. um, which is still fun and getting to record videos and be on camera for fundraisers and, and different events. Um, I really enjoy that. I've done some media training for companies and am working on a digital media training course. That's so good. Uh, because I do think that there are a lot of particularly small business owners um, that would really love to be more comfortable on camera to promote their brand, mm -hmm. to promote their business. And here are the things that they need to know. Here yeah. are the things to, to yes. work on it if, if you want to be in local media. Okay, well, sign me up. I'll oh, be your first please, consumer you of, your, of your new course. <laughs> um, but um, you know what? I think for you, this is what I'm seeing, is that everyone had to pivot in 2020. Mm -hmm. I feel like so many people are going to look back on, on a lot of hardships for 2020 in a lot of people's lives. But a lot of people are going to say, here's what I did different. And here's what I learned. And yeah. here's how I had to pivot. Mm -hmm. I feel like you got a head start on that with us. I feel like you had to pivot a year earlier, right. you know? Yeah. And so you're finding new things that you can do. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really good and exciting, um, even if it doesn't feel new and exciting yeah. to you somewhere. Okay, yeah. so where you are now, 
If you could have your dream, where mm -hmm. would you see yourself in 10 years? You would have a 15 year old. Oh my gosh. And a 10 year old. Stop. They'd be in school full time. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like, what would be your dream? Uh, you know, it's always been my dream to host my own show. Um, kind of like this. Uh, do you need you'd a co-host? You'd be so good. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, um, can I tell you, I was a little nervous interviewing oh, you. Stop. No, I'm like, she's like a professional. No. Okay, so carry uh, on. But yeah, that it has always been my dream to have my own show. I'm a total foodie, so the ultimate dream would be to be hosting my own food show. Uh, not necessarily where I'm doing the cooking. I enjoy cooking, but mostly eating and talking. That's the kind of foodie I am. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. give me the good food and yeah. wine, Let me and we'll have it. good conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, love, I love to try all foods. Um, um, and so I love to eat food, talk about food, talk to chefs, pick their brains, you know, why did you make this and find out about their families and how they were raised and, you know, take our children to restaurants so that they can try different foods. Um, and I would love to host a show that kind of focused on some of those things. That, that would be the dream. Uh, but if that's not happening and I'm mostly just with uh, my kids a lot, I know that I will be very happy and yeah. very fortunate. Yeah. Okay, so we live in Austin. I'm gonna throw this at you real quick, mm -hmm. but you're a foodie. Yeah, big time. Austin is like one of the best places to live as far it as is. food. Yeah. Uh, what are some of your favorite restaurants here in town? Okay, well, U Uchi and Uchiko. Yes. I I mean, you can't go you wrong. You cannot go there. wrong. You cannot go wrong. Love them so much. In fact, we were doing this. Maybe you know, know the answer to this. Aaron and I, the last place we ate before Mm. Everything shut down was Uchi, ah. and I was like, "That was a good last meal." That is a good. We've eaten last out meal. since then, but yeah, that we've was done like, a lot of takeout, yeah. and we actually have eaten there since yeah. then. Uh, you know, I love French food, so I love Justine's, oh, yes. and there's this small, authentic French restaurant, Chez Nou. Um, they had shut down during the okay. pandemic, but uh -huh. one of my favorite restaurants yeah. in the city. Uh -huh. mm. What's your favorite Tex-Mex? Oh, that is so hard. I know, Everyone right? Everyone has their places. Yeah. yeah. I love Polvos down love in South Hurst. Yeah, I love so Polvos. Good. Uh, El Alma. El is a Alma great is my one. favorite mm -hmm. because they have an avocado margarita. So good. Which makes my yeah. husband gag, and I'm like, I love it so much. <laughs> they have a delicious spicy Paloma, too. Oh, yeah. I love that. How my daughter got her name. Paloma. I love it. That's so <laughs> much. That's so much. Um, well, Austin is a great place, and I'm so okay. glad that we both live here. And I, I believe in your dream. Thanks, Jamie. I'll yeah, be we'll cheering you on. I'll, if you have taste testers, I'll be there. You know, sometimes oh, they have the people yes. sitting at the table. Aaron, okay. Ivy, and I will be there. And we'll be eating your food. Wonderful. Yeah. And if you yeah. ever need someone to sit in on your show, for <laughs> here it is. Tag team, tag team. Yeah. Um, Lauren, thank you so much. Thank this you for has been me. a joy. And the thing is, this conversation is one that a lot of people are having about motherhood and about working and about making difficult choices, choices that you would make again that are even hard and you would still do it again. It's true. Um, it's true. It's true. So guys, thank you for joining us today. Okay, you're still here. We already finished the show, but you're still here. And I'm so glad you're here because I need to tell you something. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. While you're at it, like it. And then while you're at it, tell your friends. We have so many good shows coming up. So come on, subscribe. Do all the things.